Welcome to Spiritual Dessert Truths episode 141 for Russell Brand and other people. Tonight's show is a reenactment of the conversation between Joseph Campbell, which will be reenacted by me, and I will be playing the role of Bill Moyers, <laughs> the younger. <laughs> it is from the book, The Power of Myth. So here I am, Joseph Campbell. <clears throat> What kind of new myth do we need? We need myths that will identify the individual, not with his local group, but with the planet. A model for that is the United States. Here were 13 different little colony nations that decided to act in unison in a common interest without disregarding the individual interests of any one of them. There is something about that on the Great Seal of the United States. That's why the Great Seal is all about. I carry a copy of the Great Seal in my pocket in the form of a dollar bill. Here is the statement of the ideals that brought about the formation of the United States. Look at this dollar bill. And here is the Great Seal of the United States. <laughs> Look at the pyramid on the left. A pyramid has four sides. These are the four points of the compass. There is somebody at this point. There's somebody at that point. There's somebody at this point. When you're down on the lower levels of the pyramid, you will either be on one side or the other. But when you get up to the top, the points all come together. And there the eye of God opens. And to them, it was a God of reason. Yes. And this is the first nation in the world that was ever established on the basis of reason instead of simply warfare. These were 18th century deists, these gentlemen. Over here we read, in God we trust. But that is not the God of the Bible. These men did not believe in a trust. They did not believe in a fall. They did not think the mind of man was cut off from God. The mind of man, cleansed of secondary and merely temporal concerns, beholds with the radiance of a cleansed mirror, a reflection of the rational mind of God. Reason puts you in touch with God. Consequently, for these men, there is no special revelation anywhere, and none is needed because the mind of man clear of its fallibilities is sufficiently capable of the knowledge of God. All people in the world are thus capable because all people in the world are capable of reason. All men are capable of reason. This is the fundamental principle of democracy because everybody's mind is capable of true knowledge. You don't have to have a special authority or a special revelation telling you that this is the way things should be. And yet these symbols come from mythology. Yes, but they come from a certain quality of mythology. It's not the mythology of a special revelation. The Hindus, for example, don't believe in special revelation. They speak of a state in which the ears have opened to the song of the universe. Here the eye is open to the radiance of the mind of God. And that's a fundamental deist idea. Once you reject the idea of the fall of the garden, man has not come off from his source. Now back to the great seal. When you count the number of ranges on this pyramid, you find that there are 13. And when you come to the bottom, there's an inscription in Roman numerals. Of course, it's 1776. Then when you add one and seven and seven and six, you get 21 which is the age of reason, is it not? It was in 1776 that the 13 states declared independence. The number 13 is the number of transformation and rebirth. At the Last Supper, there were 12 apostles and one Christ who was going to die and be reborn. 13 is the number getting out of the field of bounds of 12 into the transcendent. You have the 12 signs of the zodiac and the sun. These men were very conscious of the number 13 as the number of resurrection and rebirth and new life. And they played it up here all the way through. But as a practical matter, there were 13 states. Yes, but wasn't that symbolic? This is not simply coincidental. This is the 13 states 
as themselves symbolic of what they were. That would explain the other inscription up there, Novos Ordo Seclorum, a new order of the world. This is a new order of the world. And the saying above, Anuit Coptis, means he has smiled on our accomplishments or our activities. He, he, the eye. What is represented by the eye? Reason. In Latin, you wouldn't have to say he, it could be it or she or he, but the divine power has smiled on our doings. And so this new world has been built in the sense of God's original creation and the reflection of God's original creation through reason has brought this about. If you look beyond that pyramid, you see a desert. If you look before it, you see plants growing. The desert, the tumult in Europe, wars and wars and wars, we have pulled ourselves out of it and created a state in the name of reason not in the name of power, and out of that will come the flowerings of new life. That's the sense of that part of the pyramid. Now, look at the right side of the dollar bill. There's the eagle. The bird of Zeus. The eagle is the downcoming of the god into the field of time. The bird is the incarnation principle of the deity. This is the bald eagle, the American eagle. This is the American counterpart of the eagle of the highest god Zeus. He comes down descending into the world of the pairs of opposites, the field of action. One mode of action is war and the other is peace. So in one of his feet, the eagle holds 13 arrows and that's the principle of war. In the other, he holds a laurel leaf with 13 leaves, and that is the principle of peace conversation. The eagle is looking in the direction of the laurel. That is the way those idealists who founded our country would wish us to be looking. Diplomatic relationships and so forth, but thank God he's got the arrows in the other foot in case that doesn't work. <laughs> But what does the eagle represent? He represents what's indicated in this radiant sign above his head. I was lecturing once at the Foreign Service Institute in Washington on Hindu mythology, sociology and politics. There's a saying in the Hindu book of politics that the ruler must hold in one hand the weapon of war, the big stick, and in the other, the peaceful sound of the song of cooperative action. And there I was, standing with my two hands like this, and everybody in the room laughed. <laughs> I couldn't understand. And then they began pointing. I looked back, and here was this picture of the eagle hanging on the wall behind my head in just the same posture that I was in. <laughs> but when I looked, I also noticed this sign above his head and that there were nine feathers in his tail. Nine is the number of the descent of the divine power into the world. When the Angelus rings, it rings nine times. Now, over the eagle's head are 13 stars arranged in the form of the Star of David. This used to be Solomon's seal. Yes, do you know why it's called Solomon's seal? No, Solomon used to seal monsters and giants and things into jars. You remember in the Arabian Nights when they'd open the jar and out would come the genie? I noticed that Solomon's seal here composed of 13 stars. And then I saw that each of the triangles was the Pythagorean tetrax. The tetrax being, this is a triangle composed of 10 points, one point in the middle and four points to each side adding up to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. This is the primary symbol of the Pythagorean philosophy, susceptible of a number of interrelated mythological, cosmological, psychological, and sociological interpretations, one of which is the dot at the apex of representing the creative center out of which the universe and all things have come. And that's all, folks. And on that bright note, 
<laughs> Pleasant dreams. <laughs>